Hello, this is Jerry Dearman. Welcome to the Daily Message, where we bring a message from God's Word every day, and hopefully a timely message, a relevant message. Today, I want to talk to you about God's provision during COVID-19, all this economic fallout. Let me just tell you something about God, the Creator God. He's not like just any God that people serve or worship around this world. The Creator is created everything we need, all the plants and the vegetables, the fruits that grow, all the air that we breathe. He is so on top of this that he's used to this. And so I want to bring this message to you from the Word of God, because this is not just a general message. It's a message for you. God wants to provide for you. There's a reason why I created this video. There's a reason why you're watching this video, because the Creator God loves you and He wants to provide for you, but He wants to show you how to access His resources and how to see supernatural provision come to your life. So let me pray for you quickly. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would help me to convey these promises and these truths about how you provide for people supernaturally. Help each person that's watching, listening, to be able to grasp this and to apply it so that they can know that you are indeed Creator God and you're a loving and benevolent and capable God. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I want to start with some scriptures. You know, the Bible that we have, this is not just any ordinary book. This Bible was inspired. There's a reason why it's been the bestseller ever since the printing press was invented. The Bible's been the best-selling book in the world. And there's a reason for that, because these words, though some people just see it as a religious holy book, these words were inspired through human authors, but inspired by the Holy Spirit, and that's why it's impactful. Words are powerful. You know, many, everybody knows that, you know, you can speak words and just pierce somebody's heart, destroy somebody. Many people have committed suicide because of words people have spoken to them. That's the death side. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. But there's a life side as well. Words can give life. Somebody that was on the verge of suicide, somebody can speak words of life and revive their spirit, revive their confidence, revive their zeal for life and make them want to live and believe that there's life ahead. Words are powerful, but words are also spiritual. And in God's Word, these promises that He gave, you have to understand, these are promises that came from the heart of God, out of God's mouth. They're captured in Scripture. And so when we read these promises, they're not just encouraging words, they're God speaking words to let us know that His power is backing these promises. But you have to learn how to engage these promises. How do you access them? They, they're not automatic. In other words, just because God wants everybody in the world to know Him, to be blessed by Him, to have His favor and such, that doesn't mean it happens. It happens by hearing, believing, and responding in the appropriate way. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. But first, let's get to some of these promises. We're talking about God's provision during COVID-19, all this economic fallout. I don't care how bad it gets in this world. I don't care... Uh, what's happening to all your neighbors, all the other businesses, all the other employees, etc., etc. If you'll look to the Lord, you're in a different category. Listen to what it says in Psalm 46, verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In other words, God's not some far away God in heaven. You can't reach him. You can't find him. No, he is right there in the trouble, a very present help in trouble. If he's your God, and he can be, you reach out to him, he will be your God. He wants to be your God. He's a very present help in trouble. So don't get the idea that he's not paying attention to you, that he's far off somewhere, and that he can't hear you. No, he's a very present help in trouble. He's right there where you are right now. Psalm 23. Many people know Psalm 23. It's quoted at funerals and such and uh, in many occasions. But it says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Many of you recognize that phrase. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let me read it to you in a different translation. In the contemporary English version, it says, You, Lord, are my shepherd, I will never be in need. And that's really what that's saying. When, it's, when the psalmist said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That means I will never lack. I will not lack anything because he's my shepherd. So let me say it this way. If you'll follow the Lord, if you'll look to him, 
receive his direction, instruction, and he wants to give it to you, you'll never lack. You'll never be in want. He will always lead you to the right place at the right time. It won't be happenstance. It won't be coincidence. It won't just be that you got lucky. Uh Uh-uh. No, God will lead you to the right place at the right time to do the right thing for Him to bless you and to prosper you, to supernaturally provide for you. This is the way that our God is. That's why David said, The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me, and therefore I'll never be in one. Listen to 2 Corinthians 9, 8. This is one of the most extreme verses in the Bible, but it's absolutely true, talking about God. It says, And God is able to make all grace. What is grace? When God gives you something you didn't earn. So God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Do you see all those extreme words? This is because the Bible is telling us you have to realize you're working with an unlimited God. He has everything at his disposal. He knows everybody in the world. The whole earth belongs to him. The Bible says in Psalm Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's in all of its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. The Bible says he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. God is the owner of all things. So even though human beings seem think that they own things, the Bible says though, though the real owner is God. And he has no problem moving resources around in the earth. A lot of people think, well, you know, I I lost this or I lost that. Well, maybe or maybe not. Maybe he didn't lose it. Maybe God just moved that resource to somebody else that was calling upon him and asking for his help. Our God is real and God is able to do everything. So don't ever think that what you need is impossible. For with God, nothing is impossible. That's Luke 137. For with God, nothing is will be impossible. And listen to this, Philippians 4. A lot of times we quote the 19th verse, and and my God shall supply all of your need. But backing up in verse 15, it says in Philippians 4, 15, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica you sent aid or you sent, yeah, aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. Paul said, I have everything I need. I'm not asking you to give me something because I need something from you. He said, I have everything I need. In fact, I have more than enough. I abound. I'm full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma and acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So here the Apostle Paul is saying, look, for those of you that have already given, you've already sacrificed to help other people. You've already given maybe to your church ministry and such. He said, you need to know that when you do that, God counts that. And so therefore, he will supply your need in return. There's this whole given, it'll be given. Somebody says what goes around comes around. Yeah, and and that generally applies uh, in all things. But the Bible says that God takes note when you specifically have given, and he will make sure that that's returned to you. And then, of course, for you that are tithers, that give 10%. Believers do this, and I believe they ought to, but even unbelievers sometimes they've learned this principle that we need to give because of the give and it will be given back to you principle. Many businesses uh, will do this. They'll make sure to give 10% away and such. But listen to what it says when we do it God's way, when we bring the tithe into the storehouse, into his church, which would be applied, I believe, today. But Malachi 3.10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, God is speaking, that you that there would be provision in my house. And try me, one translation says, put me to the test, and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord. So what is the Lord saying? The Lord is saying, look, if you'll be one of those people that gives that 10% to the ministry, to your church and such, to God, it's really bringing it to God. And God says, here's what I'll do. I'll use my power. I'll open the windows of heaven. 
and I'll pour out blessing for you. And not only that, I'll rebuke the devourer. You ever feel like you just got ahead or you just got caught up and something happens and it devours? God says, I'll rebuke that devourer for your sakes to make sure that that doesn't happen to you. Now, we have so many testimonies from various people, but let me just read one that came in just recently during this coronavirus situation. But this this gal is a tither, by the way. We know her. She's been a, a part of our staff and such. But she said this, I wanted to give a praise report. I was only working 12 to 16 hours a week. God was sustaining us, but I really needed more hours to be able to buy clothes and, and keep up with things. She said, I prayed and thank God for all the hours. See, in advance, before anything happened, she prayed. She looked to God and thanked him for all the hours that he'd already been providing and even the downtime that I got to enjoy being at home. Then the crazy happened and I went from uh, 13 hours to 40 hours a week and it has stayed that way. And since the company that she works for, she named it, I'm not going to name it. Since uh, this company, everyone is a wearing mask or needing to wear masks. So she said, so I made some masks, and what happened was she was just going to give them away, but people started giving her the money that they thought the masks were worth, and so uh, she got over $200 by giving masks away, and they were uh, giving the money, and then she said she has orders for more masks from people, another couple of hundred dollars and such, and she goes on to say, and not only that, but she got a raise, not only did she get more hours, but she got a raise per hour. All of this now, while other people are struggling, I'm not certainly not looking down on that because everybody's being hit in one way or another by this. But let me tell you, here's somebody that was hit, hours reduced, not getting enough income, but she looked to God. She was thankful for what she had, but she looked to God and he did something. And all of a sudden she's got like working full time, got a raise And she's making money on the side with this side business. And she even said in here, she already had the fabric to make the mask. She didn't have to go buy a thing. Now, this is just one example of what God wants to do in our lives. Listen to one more passage from the Bible, Psalm 34, 6 through 10. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him. God hears people in need. Just call out to the Lord. This is how you connect with Him. You're hearing His promises. You're hearing testimony of the fact that it actually works. Call out to Him. Pray to Him. And so it says, This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear Him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. In other words, try. Try this. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. There is no lack to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. So if you'll seek God, if you'll look to him, humble yourself. It takes humility to stop, maybe to look up, to lift your hands, say, God, I'm asking for your help. If you'll stop and do that, he's there. He's a very present help in trouble. He'll listen to you. He'll respond to you. Things will happen. And when they do happen, remember that you prayed this. Don't just think, wow, look at that. Coincidence. Circumstances change. No. Give credit where credit's due. Give it to the Lord. Let me just close with one example in the Bible. Peter, uh, one of Jesus' disciples, came to Jesus because they had to pay some temple tax. And Jesus told him, go cast a hook into the sea. He was a fisherman, but usually with nets. And, and Jesus said, and the fish that comes up first, there'll be a coin in its mouth. That's enough to pay the temple tax for you and me. Well, that's like seemingly ridiculous. But guess what? He did it. And sure enough, the first fish, he looks inside the mouth and it has a coin. That's enough to pay the temple tax for Jesus and himself. God knows where all the resources are. Look to him, pray to him, listen to him, and let him cause you to have your own testimony. Glad to be with you today. Look forward to tomorrow's daily message. Hi, I'm Jerry Dearman. Thank you for watching today. To not miss out on any of our videos, you can subscribe by clicking here. Or to watch another video, you can click here. Go ahead, pick one.